The development of IoT applications in health has accelerated due to the reliable and low-cost sensors, which can be embedded in devices as small as watches, bracelets or phones. They can be used to monitor your heart rate, blood condition and breathing, to supplement the already existing accelerometers, gyroscopes and other motion sensors. The need to drive down rapidly escalating healthcare costs to improve health outcomes and to place patients in better control of their state of health make IoT applications such as these highly sought after. The Human Development Index, compiled by the United Nations Development Program, reveals that Africa has the highest disease load in the world, such as HIV, malaria and tuberculosis, and is therefore a prime target for the implementation of IoT to create quantum changes in health outcomes across a population of over a billion. Governments, entrepreneurs and scientists are using technology to address this problem. The logistics infrastructure in Africa can be difficult at times due to road conditions, distances, traffic and travel infrastructure. This creates a severe last mile challenge in terms of completing the delivery of products and services. One of the most consistent and serious challenges medical clinics face in rural Africa is attaining adequate supplies of blood for blood transfusions, especially for women who have just given birth and continue to lose blood. This is known as postpartum hemorrhage and South Africa has a disproportionately high percentage of preventable rural fatalities due to this medical condition. Consider the medical and logistic last mile challenges in resolving this. The patient's blood needs to be type tested in order to provide the correct transfusion, especially as a transfusion of the incorrect blood type can cause serious and in some cases fatal consequences. The sample needs to be sent to a laboratory for testing and the appropriate blood sent back. Now consider the logistic and cost challenge for this rural location. This is clearly urgent and is a two-way trip, so often only a helicopter would be able to deliver the blood in time. These tasks are fraught with complexity in the thousands of non-optimally resourced and geographically dispersed clinics in rural Africa. How would a problem such as this be approached using available technology? The South African blood industry is unusual in that it has a single entity responsible for collection, processing and delivery of all blood products. This is the South African Blood Transfusion Service or SANBIS for short. SANBIS decided to attack this problem using unique drone technology. This was adopted after a strategic unpacking session where the CEO a drone enthusiast in his private capacity, suggested using autonomous unmanned vehicles as a possible solution. The result led to the creation of the world's first medical supply drone. Sanbus proposed to repurpose the mechanism to provide medical assistance to people who needed it the most. That could potentially save thousands of lives per year. In order to achieve this, Sanbus had to reconfigure the drone enabling it to send the blood and tissue samples far enough to reach the faraway destinations of some of the clinics and furthermore, to get the samples there fast enough in order to reach the patients in time. The result was TRON, the brand new blood plasma carrying drone capable of taking off and landing vertically like any other drone, but has wings that allow it to fly in a straight line over extensive distances with excellent energy efficiency. This unique capability is enabled by maintaining the propellers in a vertical position during takeoff and landing while rotating them horizontally when in steady state flight. This is a novel application of IoT that has only become feasible and viable due to progress in sensor technology, increases in the capability of processors to cope with the rapid computations and adjustments while in flight, miniaturization and of course the reductions in the costs of components and their integration into a working cohesive system. These drivers are instructive as we explore other avenues for commercialization of sustainable applications of IoT systems. The drones are engineered to meet seven criteria, which are speed, two-way logistics, physical conditions, safety, payload capacity, distance and cost. The payload of two kilograms is equivalent to four units of plasma and both the G-forces and temperature must be carefully monitored with sensors and controlled with onboard systems to avoid damage to the payload. The drone is manually controlled for takeoff and landing, but is autonomous in level flight 
and needs to be able to autonomously manage location and flight paths tightly. The IoT implementation is quite sophisticated as it includes a series of sensors for flight including airspeed, ground speed, wind direction, air temperature and even acceleration, GPS for location and an intelligent autonomous control system to both navigate and fly the vehicle. Most of the processing is performed at the edge, that is, on board the vehicle, due to latency and signal disruption challenges. The algorithms, together with the sensors and actuators, operate to minimize turbulence while in flight to avoid damage to the plasma. There are four ways drones typically navigate. Either they use GPS or other beacons, or they accept guidance instructions from a computer, or they navigate off a st stored map, or they are flown by an expert in control. Tron uses a combination of all four. In autonomous mode, the drone can fly under GPS-aided navigation, with autonomous program flights using GPS waypoints. For landing and takeoff, one has operator control. The backup system uses a stored map in the event of loss of GPS signal. Concerns were expressed as the vehicle has a top speed of 180 km per hour, so any failure could have serious consequences to other air traffic or even on the ground as it must fly over developed areas on its journey. Further concerns were expressed regarding the impact of adverse weather conditions or complete signal loss on the vehicle. It therefore has a fail-safe in the event of catastrophic failure of signals to allow for a safe landing and to avoid hurting people or damaging infrastructure on the ground. Currently, it is awaiting approval by the Civil Aviation Authority and will have its own flight paths from which it cannot deviate. The overall monitoring, control and management systems, therefore, have to have multiple redundancies to ensure safe operations. The deployment of IoT to serve health demands in remote villages does not end with this drone, of course. There's a need for more real-time symptom assessments, especially for chronic patients in these remote clinics. Future innovations will therefore include heart rate monitors and health trackers to obtain real-time updates on patient condition for more rapid and proactive interventions. A successful completion of this first pilot drone and certification will hopefully see many more of these vehicles helping save lives across the continent and potentially even being exported to the world.